thank you to IC Permit for inviting us. Thank you to my colleagues, Laura and, and Paula. So we, I think we are pretty close to the lunch break. So I'm going to try to be very short and very simple, because the idea that I'm going to present today is an extremely simple, also challenging idea. So a few years ago, three medical research infrastructures, BBMRI, ECRAN, and EATRIS, start brainstorming about the possibility of sharing a dream. And this dream was, how can we work together to accelerate the development of biomedical research? In this complex and fragmented landscape, we have the capacities of doing something together that individually we won't be able to do it. And at the heart of this concept uh, is the willingness of one member of the audience today, Francesco Fiorindi, who during his time in, in BBMRI was pushing forward and was energizing this, this discussion. And I want to say that today we are here probably also thanks to your efforts, Francesco. So this concept of the European Alliance of Medical Research Infrastructure does not want to create another, another organization, another complexity in the landscape, but exactly the opposite defragment what is already existing, creating something that for us is very important. Moving from this concept of collaboration, which is an interaction that happens very frequently among the different stakeholders that participate in the European research area, to a more long-term perspective of cooperation, creating a long-term uh, journey, a common space with a common agenda where the three organizations will start developing and will start sharing the, this journey all together. So um, we have why BBMRI, ECREN, and EATRIS are part of this uh, noble idea of creating an alliance of the three organizations, because uh, the, there is a simple common element at the heart of our concept, which is the patient. What we want to do is using the scientific capacities that are present in the organization to accelerate the uh, scientific discoveries for being transformed into practical solutions that have a positive impact on people's, on people's health. And in this process, it emerged very obviously that uh, we have the capacity of promoting the development and the implementation of a global personalized medicine agenda. The EU AMRI, the, this cooperation, long-term cooperation between the three referen uh, the three. Uh, medical research infrastructures, represent a large group of scientific and technological capacities in Europe for accelerating biomedical research. Altogether, we represent more than 700 research institutes that are located in 29 countries, uh, the practical totality of the European Union, with three uh, main scientific and technological focus, which are uh, linked to the nature of the organizations that are part of the alliance biobanking and biomedical resources, which are brought by BBMRI, translational research, understanding this as the process by which scientific discovered, discoveries are transformed after a long journey into a practical solution for the patient's needs, led by EATRIS, and uh, multinational clinical trials led by Ukraine. So the uh, core concept of, uh, of BBMRI, the European Research Infrastructure for Biobanking and Biomolecular Resources, is to uh, facilitate access to one of the largest, if not the largest collection of uh, human samples at the global level, uh, data and also biomolecular resources uh, in a completely, let's say, open manner to facilitate the scientific discoveries, offering these services to the scientific community. EATRIS, the European Research Infrastructure for Translational Medicine, provides uh, facilities, services, and creates tools that are necessary for the progress of biomedical research and translational medicine. And they, they go from uh, target validation uh, across the entire uh, uh, translational value chain to early clinical trials. And ECREN, as uh, Paula, uh, Paula presented, the European Clinical Research uh, Infrastructure Network, uh, has as, as the core of its mission uh, to facilitate uh, clinical trials across borders, supporting sponsors, investigator, clinicians, uh, to be effective in conduct, in conduct those trials. So BBMRI, uh, uh, the European Infrastructure for Biobanks, is a large organization. There are more than 23 uh, members, 23 member states right now, uh, also including EARC. Uh, and they provide services in the area of biobanking, 
working in biobanking development, providing also services in the area of LC and research on LC needs. Also, IT services and research for the optimizing the use and the exploitation of data that emerge from research using these samples. And also having a strong profile on uh, having a voice uh, in public affairs and stakeholder engagement to facilitate the dialogue across uh, stakeholders that uh, work uh, in biomedical research in early stages. They also provide tools uh, and also guidelines for quality management uh, for services and research in general. Thank you to consideration that we all are aware that uh, quality and reproducibility is still one of the big challenges in the development of the biomedical research pipeline. EATRIS, as uh, Laura mentioned, uh, has as, uh, as a main goal to support researchers uh, and, and, and the scientific community in general to uh, facilitate access to services and tools for the progress of translational, of translational research, more than 130 right now institutions, and provide services not only to researchers, not only to academia, but also to the industry, to public funding agencies, to charities, to policymakers, with a specific focus on those gaps that are key in the progress of biomedical research, as, uh, for instance, such as uh, regulatory support, HCA services, education and training. And as uh, Laura mentioned, they are structured these services across these five service platforms that he mentioned before. And I think that uh, Paula explained perfectly what, what's the, the concept, the, the value proposition of EATRIS that supporting clinical trials across borders. So the question is why three organizations that they have individual agendas and they very well established, they decide to create this common journey? There is one simple reason. We strongly believe that we have the need and the capacity for defragmenting and optimize the existing research landscape in Europe, putting together and harmonizing the activities and the resources that are on the umbrella of the different organizations of the Alliance. Um, doing that, we certainly accelerate the process of providing access to uh, facilities, resources, and research services uh, accelerating also the research agenda of the different institutions that are using the services of the three research infrastructures. And at the end of the day, uh, doing that, we uh, have the, also the opportunity of filling the gaps that are currently present in this complex project that we call translational medicine, by which the discoveries that emerge from the science fields and transform into a real intervention at people's health. So uh, in this process, it became very, very obvious from day one that uh, putting our capacities together for accelerating uh, the biomedical research value proposition, we had the capacity also of supporting the development of the implementation of personalized medicine. And in the next few years, and uh, I, I want to make clear that this is a very early joint uh, journey because the alliance was... Uh, launched officially at the beginning of this year, we already have in our agenda the possibility of building a constellation of services that using the capacities uh, are, that are already existing in the free research infrastructure will be offered to the community in terms of um, offering joint research services for complex programs, for complex uh, projects and programs as well, training programs with a strong focus on personalized medicine offer not only to academics, but also to patients, to the industry and the policy makers, creating joint operational resources, working together, and Laura gave an example on joint certification programs to uh, assess the quality and reproducibility of preclinical research in laboratories that are part of the Alliance, creating also partnership with other stakeholders that are absolutely essential for the progress of personalized medicine, such as the industry, policymaker, the patient community, and so on. And also raising our voice for uh, putting uh, in public discussion those priorities that, from our perspective, are essential for the development of, of, personalized, of personalized medicine. In the specific area of personalized medicine, I think that what uh, the three organizations are doing is we are already providing, I'm, give you, I'm going to give you a few examples, uh, generating scientific evidence for uh, the uh, process of accelerating the personalized medicine value chain, demonstrating that uh, this uh, concept that one size does not fit all, 
also understanding and delivering accelerating the delivery process of clinical benefits for personalized medicine. Uh, no question that uh, education and training in the area of personalized medicine is one of the big gaps. And we are working together, creating a common ground where patients and also scientists will work together for creating educational and training tools for accelerating the knowledge of the possibilities and the challenges of personalized medicine. A great example for that is the Summer School on Personalized Medicine that takes place in Portugal and has the willingness of being a reference educational and training tool for the development of the personalized medicine educational, uh, let's say, domain in, in Europe. And finally, uh, supporting policymakers and supporting uh, a policy landscape for implementing personalized medicine, providing our vision and our perspective on where the opportunities, the opportunities are. These are just five initiatives where the three infrastructures collaborate, uh, all of them personalized medicine related. Uh, Laura and, uh, and, and uh, Paula mentioned already Permit, UPERL, and uh, Remedy for All. I just want to mention also two large projects, uh, Cancer and Isidor, that are providing services from the infrastructure perspective to the community, Cancer for the development of, the, of, the, of cancer research and the cancer mission in particular, and Isidor for tackling emerging uh, infectious challenges in Europe, a project that was launched uh, by, supported by the Commission in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. And at the end of the day, uh, I think the concept is very simple because in, in this discussion that we have for the progress of personalized medicine, uh, I think our priority is, is, is clearly to have the vision of the individual, the vision of the citizen, of the vision of the patient that understands that the way medicine is delivered uh, is the, the way uh, his or her individual um, challenges are going, to be, uh, are going to be tackled and we are going to provide the specific solutions for the specific needs on one specific patient. I think this is crystal clear, but sometimes in the uh, complex uh, landscape of organizing agenda, that's something that it's important that we all, scientists in particular, keep an eye on that and, and remember. Um, I'm going to close right now, but uh, just to indicate that uh, this journey represents the willingness of already established organizations for, as I said before, doing something together that individually we wouldn't have the capacity of doing. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, are there any questions to Tony? Hi, Tony. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the speakers. Uh, just a quick question. I was wondering, I'm curious to know how much the infrastructure are used by uh, personalized medicine uh, projects. So infrastructures are there to be used somehow. And we know, for example, in rare disease field, that's not often the case. They're not well known, they're not much requested, the services, unfortunately. So I was wondering if in personalized medicine, there are requests, there are you know, a flow, because I haven't seen any number on that. Thank you for your question. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, the complexity of the landscape is so wide that it's tragic to see there are organizations and there are resources in Europe that are not known and therefore are not used. Uh, and this is what happens in the research infrastructure world. There is no question. Um, we have to keep in mind that the research infrastructure program represents the willingness of the European Commission and the member states to facilitate the use of the already existing facilities. Uh, this is a process that is changing dramatically in the, next, in the last few years, and actually it's very interesting because if you look at the calls that have been published by the Commission, more and more the Commission encourages the use of the research infrastructure, which is a way for raising awareness of the capacities of this, of this organization. Um, I think that more and more I see projects where the use of capacities in the research infrastructures are present, and I have no doubt that this number is going to increase in the next few years. But it's already present 
in the development of several key scientific actions that are currently ongoing under the umbrella particular of projects uh, supported by the European Commission. I think there is a follow-up question and... A, a complementary <laughs> question, I think. Also there. No, we don't have. Ah. No, no, just a quick one. I, I was wondering whether also the other research funders in Europe, and there are many in ICPromad, could also somehow contribute if, if we could establish a framework of collaboration with the research infrastructure to promote the use of research infrastructure also within calls, not necessarily at European level. That, that was the addition. <laughs> Nice. Uh, let me just tell you, I hope, I'm, I'm very positive that research infrastructures are going to have a specific present in the research agenda of the future European partnership, that that will probably facilitate the, let's say, the mutual understanding of what these organizations can do for the progress of personalized medicine. Two last questions before the lunch break. I do see one question here and then the last one. Yeah, thank you also first for your efforts to defragmentize. I think that's super important. Then I also come with a question more from a, from a user perspective. So I work with a lot of SMEs and ambitious translational academic projects. So, you know, how can I basically pitch your offering to them? What are, how they can get like an easy access? What are the expenses? What is the quality also to benchmark against, you know, professional CROs, for example, or, or industry partners? So, so that would be really interesting to get a better understanding and maybe also to be able to communicate that much better to SMEs in Europe. Yeah, that's quite easy, knock at our door. <laughs> so the important thing is that you know where the door is. Uh, yeah, but there is a door and then we are absolutely open to the needs and we have already a very active uh, flow of exchange of collaboration with SMEs. For the, this project of creating the European Alliance, our plan is to create a single point of access and a portal that will accelerate and will be friendly for the users and facilitate this process, yeah. But the, the capacity is already there. Huh? I think the, the, the challenge is, as I mentioned before, the noise in the system is so high, the music is so complex, that sometimes we all tend to be a little bit lost in the middle of this uh, symphony, I would say. And then also, I mean, the advantages for working with the existing infrastructures versus looking for, you know, professional service providers that, that can do some of these things. I mean, this is also something I think we can make clear to SMEs in a different way. 100%. Maybe. Yeah, thank you. Good. Last question here before the lunch break. Okay. Uh, hello, good morning. Thank you very much for your very nice presentation. Uh, I am Erika Sella. I am the coordinator of the EU Africa Permit Project. Uh, we are one of the uh, CSAs uh, in the IC Permit family, and we are working with African countries to uh, promote the collaboration between Africa and Europe in personalized medicine. And uh, I have the feeling that infrastructure is a very good opportunity for collaboration with Africa. And I wanted to know. Uh, what are the possibilities of African organizations collaborating with uh, one of your infrastructures? Because uh, training is also important. Uh, from the mapping we have done in Africa, training is a relevant issue in personalized medicine for African researchers. So I just wanted to know the opportunities to, to collaborate uh, beyond uh, Europe uh, researchers. Thank you. Is it working? Um, no, I, I, I think, uh, so one, one of the first levels of collaboration that the research infrastructures have beyond, uh, beyond Europe is, of course, projects like EU Africa Permed, where we have an opportunity to uh, participate in training and capacity building uh, events, where we can, one, facilitate uh, the connections between the research communities, uh, in, in, in this case in Africa, and the research community here. So that, that's, let's say, a first level of, uh, of interaction. Um, I think another opportunity is to look at the upcoming uh, calls and opportunities for collaboration and as the partnerships are being built, in particular the European Partnership for uh, Personalized Medicine, but also uh, the other partnerships, I think there's opportunities there as well for collaboration from the research infrastructures with uh, institutions beyond uh, the EU and, and these, the particularities, let's say, of these collaborations are 
currently being defined as the partnerships are being uh, are being put together. Um, then in particular, uh, I, I can speak for ECRIN, but ECRIN is leading an initiative called CRIG, uh, which stands for uh, Clinical Research um, uh, for Global Health. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, um, but I, I can provide more information on that. And really the idea behind CRIG is to have something similar to what we're doing in Ekron, but at a global level. So to reach out to uh, infrastructures and institutions overall across the globe that are uh, working on clinical research and seeing how we can kind of leverage the capacities of the different institutions ar across uh, the globe to facilitate multinational clinical research, not only region by region or continent by continent, but really at a, at a uh, global level. Um, and in particular in Krieg, we already have some African institutions that are there and some institutions in Latin America, uh, but there's always, uh, the doors I guess are open at Krieg to continue expanding that, so that's another possibility. I don't know if you want to add for Atris. Just, just one little, little comment, because I think that we do something that is meaningful and useful, other countries outside Europe are going to feel attracted. Um, let me give you a good example. This project that was just funded by the Commission, Remedy for All, for creating a European platform for repurposing drugs, where led by Beatrice, where a is present, has attracted the, atten the attention of other countries. And now together with uh, Brazil, India, and the US, we are going to create a global initiative called New Found for accelerating the use of repurposing drugs. So if we do it well, I think that our model can be is being also easily exported at the global level. In fact, indeed, uh, possibilities uh, to join and uh, to get a link to the European research infrastructures. Um, thank you once again to all three speakers and a big applause to the panel. And with this, I think uh, we are ready for the lunch break. Mm -hmm.